I was first diagnosed, it was November 21st, 2007. I found out three weeks before, which was the first week of November, that I was pregnant with twins. And so I made a prenatal appointment with uh, the doctors. By then, I was living in South Carolina with my new husband. I was a newlywed. And went to an appointment the 21st, which was the, was the day before Thanksgiving of that year. And went in for being dehydrated. I kept throwing up and just not feeling well. And when I went in, she had already did labs. So she said, okay, well, I have your labs back. And I said, okay, well, what's, is everything okay with my labs? And she said, oh, yeah, everything's fine. We just have one problem. And I'm like, okay, what's the one problem that we have? Is it diabetes? Because I've had just an additional diabetes with my eight-year-old. She's like, well, no. Um, can we ask your husband to step out of the room? So I'm like, okay. So she asked him to step out. She basically just looked at me and said, um, you tested positive for HIV. And I kind of got into a blank stare. I looked over at the wall because that was really the only thing I wanted to focus on. I didn't want to look her in the face. I didn't want to, you know, I was completely in shock, along with not feeling well. And she said, well, do you want us to bring your husband back in the room? I say, sure, bring him back in, because guess what? If I'm HIV positive, he's the reason why. So she brought him back in the room, and I can remember that day as if it happened yesterday. He just looked in shock when she told him and it, was a sh it wasn't a shock look as if, oh, she could have given me, given me HIV. It was more of a look like, wow, she found out. I left him on January 1st, 2008. February 14th, I was, well, actually, the beginning of February, I was sitting at home and I was looking at the news. And there was a um, story that came across where there was a homosexual couple, an older male and a younger male. The older male had knowingly infected his younger male partner. And at that moment, I found out that knowingly infecting someone without disclosing your status to them was a felony crime in the state of Florida. So what I did, I immediately got on the phone, called the sex crimes unit at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office spoke with the detective, and I let him know what was going on. He let me know, okay, well, get us a police report, which I did. And once they got their police report, the first thing they wanted to do is to get a recorded confession from my ex-husband. So I'm like, okay, what, what, how am I going to get a recorded confession, you know? And he's all the way in South Carolina. Here I am in Florida. You know, so at this time, he's begging me to come back to South Carolina to stay married to him. So, okay, let me use this to my advantage. So over the course of the couple days, I kind of played it off. Yeah, I might come back home, and yeah, I miss you. Yeah, I still love you. Knowing good and well, I absolutely, positively did not love him anymore, and I was not going back. Um, February 14th, Valentine's Day. His Valentine's Day gift for me was calling him with the detective on three-way, with the recorder on, while I'm asking him every question that the detective wanted me to ask. Because before we did the three-way, I said, okay, well, what do you want to know? I said, okay, well, now I got to figure out how am I going to get these questions to him and him answer them. So I called him. I'm all sad. I'm like, okay. Uh, well, I got to go see a psychologist, and they gave me a questionnaire, and I need all these questions answered so they could treat me. whoop de woo He answered every single question. He answered questions about how he was diagnosed, when he was diagnosed, how long did he know, which he had known he was positive since 2002. Um, he answered questions about you know, did he know how he got it, which he didn't know. And by then, I had found out that he was not only sleeping with other women, but also other men. And once I got that recorded confession, they issued a nationwide warrant for his arrest. They went to South Carolina. They arrested him, 
took months, but they extradited him back to Jacksonville. He pled guilty. He got sentenced for the maximum in the state of Florida, which is only, I hate it, but it's only five years in the state of Florida. He got six months served, so he only had to do four and a half years. And he's scheduled to get out March of next year. March 2012, he's scheduled to be released. A lot of people feel like, oh, if I avoid this person because they're positive, then it won't happen to me. Don't think that just because you're in a monogamous relationship or you're married that it can't happen to you. I was in a committed marriage. I wasn't in a relationship. I wasn't dating. And here, this guy that I've known for five years is positive, didn't tell anybody, and gave it to me. I mean, it can happen to anybody. And it probably has happened to a lot of people who just don't even want to know if it's happened. They assume, OK, I'm with this person. I'm married. It's not going to happen. So just understand that it can happen to you just as easily as it happened to me.